Welcome, soccer friend, to the magical world of soccer bedtime stories, where dreams and goals come together. I'm your host, Tomek, and I'm here to accompany you on a journey through the stories of some of the greatest players, games, and tournaments as you drift off to sleep. If this is your first time visiting our soccer dream world, and you enjoy the story, we welcome you to follow and subscribe to listen to all the stories in our library. If you are a returning soccer dreamer, we encourage you to review, comment, star, and like the stories you love most. Your feedback and ideas help us get better and help to expand our soccer dreaming community. Please reach out to us. It's as easy as a pass to a friend. You can just email us at soccerbedtimestories at gmail.com. Enjoy the story. Sleep well and dream big. Before we begin our story, friend, let's take a deep breath and imagine that we are all snuggled up in a cozy blanket surrounded by warmth and comfort. Tonight's story is one that will transport us to a magical world where anything is possible. We'll meet heroes, no villains, travel to far off lands, and experience incredible adventures together. So let's close our eyes, relax, and get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey that will fill our dreams with wonder and excitement. The player who would be king. Once upon a soccer time, when the fields were green and the fans were loud, there was a great match that captivated the land. In London, at a stadium now lost to history, the Highbury, two great foes met to duel, Arsenal and Tottenham. Much like Peter Pan and Hook, or the Lorax and the Wansler, or even Agatha Trunchbull and Matilda, the two did not and do not care much for each other. When they meet, sparks fly. In this beautiful day in London, one man in particular would stand out and make the sparks dance in the air. The great Thierry Henry, the would-be king of the Highbury and undisputed leader of Arsenal, was set to leave his mark. Arsenal commenced the game with a blistering assault on Tottenham's goal, seizing control of the ball and promptly breaching the net a mere four minutes into the contest. The left-footed Ashley Cole delivered a tantalizing cross destined for Wiltard, only to leave Tottenham sighing in relief as the linesman flag declared him offsides. The next few minutes would pass, but none would remember anything but the 13th minute of the match. Henri, the master, embraced a stray ball deep within his own half some 75 meters from the opposing goal. With graceful elegance, he danced past the figures of Etherington and Carr as if gliding on ice. Like a composer, he directed the ball and at times the approaching defenders as well. The king shrugging off challenges with the regal poise. Entering the goal area, he sidestepped defenders and unleashed the shot with his left foot. The ball, touched by his artistry, found its destined path, caressing the bottom left corner with a whispered promise, eluding the outstretched grasp of goalkeeper Casey Keller. Spurs star midfielder Jamie Redknapp, a mere peasant in the presence of royalty, could only watch in awe. His futile attempts to halt the virtuoso falling short and so, to celebrate this achievement, Henri, the would-be king, embarked on an odyssey across the field, a breathtaking spin or sprint that traversed the hollowed pitch until he stood before the devoted traveling Tottenham faithful. In that sacred moment, the air resonated with triumph, yet he basked in the angry chants of the opposing fans. 
a despondent crescendo that echoed through the hearts of those who had made the trip. I know at the beginning I said there would be no villains, but in this moment in time to the Tottenham fans, this foreign knight was their biggest foe. Yet, it must have been that even some of them would have appreciated what they had just experienced. The Spurs more fortunes multiplied with the ejection of Tottenham defender Simon Davies. Cast away by the referee's red card for a pair of violent transgressions. The first caution, Davies earned for a late tackle upon Ashley Cole, arriving after a mere 22 minutes had ticked away. The second booking, a cruel blow dealt by the hand of referee Mike Riley, who deemed Davies guilty in his challenge against Arsenal captain Patrick Vieira. Ten minutes shy of halftime, and just a few minutes after the first. Vera had been the victim of a merciless ass ass assault since the opening whistle, and justice was finally done. With a sigh of relief, the Spurs trudged towards halftime, only down by a solitary goal, conceded hopefully for a moment, a chance to gather their spirits. Alas, the moment was short-lived as the merciless gunners showed no mercy, pressing relentlessly upon their beleaguered rivals. In the opening moments of the second half, Arsenal cast another shadow upon the Spurs' fading hopes. Henri, a magician, transformed into a provider deftly laying the ball before Lumberg's path, inviting him to score with an ease that felt almost cruel. Suffering. Under the relentless onslaught, the Spurs clung to a glimmer of opportunity when defender Dean Richards, propelled by desperation, surged forward with purpose. But alas, his attempt, a feeble chip beyond the reach of Arsenal's keeper Shaban, found only futility as Pascal Sagan effortlessly cleared the path of his wayward endeavor. And then, in a final blow, Arsenal wielded their triumvirate of Pires, Henri, and Wiltard, a trinity of grace, orchestrating yet another masterful strike. The ball danced and weaved between their feet, an ethereal belay before Wiltard, from close range, etched his name upon the score sheet, extinguishing any remaining flickers of hope within the hearts of the Spurs faithful. The Gunners would finish victorious. Three, Zero. Years after the final whistle was blown, the match would still be remembered. Well, perhaps not the match, but rather Henri's majestic goal and proud celebration. The sculptor dreaming of the goal, perhaps, placed a majestic bronze effigy of the king outside of the stadium that replaced the Highbury. The modern emirates paid homage to its king of long ago, all who visit will forever be reminded of the man who would be king, his goal, his celebration, perhaps even now dreaming of him and dreaming of that moment in time. Sleep well, friend, and dream big. Hey soccer friends, if you enjoy soccer bedtime stories, you might also enjoy the Soccer Time Machine podcast. It is a soccer history daily for kids by kids. Join our young soccer fans on an epic adventure through the history of the beautiful game. From legendary players to historic moments, we'll explore it all in a fun and engaging way that's perfect for young soccer fans like you. So grab your jerseys and get ready to kick off this exciting journey with the Soccer Time Machine podcast on August 1st, wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. Now, off to our bedtime story, Sweet Soccer Dreams.